You're able to see my screen. Ah, Are you able to see? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, um, today being the first class, I will give you an introduction about some of the important uh, core concepts uh, like building blocks of Anaplan. What is Anaplan? Which uh, industries use Anaplan? How it would work, right? Uh, okay. So basically, in simple terms, uh, I, I don't know how much you've seen. So simple terms, Anaplan is a cloud-based planning tool, right? Uh, whatever you do on Excel, you can do it in Anaplan, but Anaplan handles huge data, data set. Uh, in Excel, if you have 1 million records, it will be very slow, okay? Yes. And if you have multiple worksheets with complex formulas, it tends to become very, sl very slow and it's not feasible. And it's also on-premise Excel. So whatever you do on Excel is, uh, is uh, local to your machine, to yourself. I can't view it unless and until you share it with me. But Anaplan is on the cloud. Anyone can access it at any time. And it is very dynamic. So uh, we have a model. You are working from your end, doing some changes. Within a few seconds, I can see those changes. And even I can start working on top of that. Right. So it is that flexible, dynamic. And there is no restriction in terms of how much data it can handle. 1 million, 2 million, even 5 million data set, it can handle very smoothly. And uh, with even that large data sets, when you make changes to the formula at the back end, it will still uh, fire and it will still give you uh, dynamic results, right? And one more beauty is that it is one place to update. It, it gets updated like wherever it is referenced, everywhere the changes flow in, okay? So for example, if you make changes at the list level, uh, the data is used in the module, module data changes. And if that module is used in a dashboard, the dashboard also reflects those changes. So it's, it's very dynamic changes flowing dynamically everywhere throughout that model. Okay. Okay. So uh, basically Anaplan is a cloud-based planning tool. Like it's an Excel on steroids, very powerful Excel that way you can say, right. Okay. And some of the important business cases is uh, uh, like for Finance industries, Anaplan is used for agile budgeting, basically to, uh, to have a budget plan for, uh, in terms of uh, what was the revenue, uh, what is the overall budget, what was the revenue, what is the expenditure, where we are in terms of profit and loss, and how you want to forecast that for next year. That is agile budgeting, right? Uh, financial consolidation, like if, there, if you have a lot of uh, uh, data. Uh, can you repeat that? Agile budgeting once. Yeah, uh, what I'm saying, right? Agile budgeting isn't like you have a total budget, like you are running an organization. Uh, you you know what is your revenue. You know what is the uh, expenses to get that revenue, right? So there is your revenue, there is expenses, and then you want to find out your profit and loss, right? For the current year. So with that data, you want to forecast it for next year. Okay. Okay, then you go with agile budgeting. And with this agile budgeting, you, you see a lot of data changes happening, right? Agile methodology. Have you heard about agile methodology? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Simple terms to say, right? Agile methodology, like there is a software life cycles, a software development life cycle. You have waterfall model. Then you have agile, oh. uh, agile model. There are multiple things. So in waterfall, right? How it works is it happens sequentially. Like uh, any, if any project comes first, the requirements will come. You understand the requirements, you, you then draw which, which is feasible requirement, then uh, which is not feasible. So then you close out the requirements, right? Those gaps you close out. Once the requirements is closed, then with those requirements that is feasible, you lay out a design plan. How will you, how will you eventually implement that requirement, right? So you come out with a design document, right? And once you get a sign off on the design, you start building. So it is a sequential one step after other first requirements, then design, then you start with the build. Uh, eventually, once the build is complete, you ask the client or the customer to test that build, whatever you have built. Right. So once testing is also done, you eventually go live and uh, deploy that model to the end user. So that is waterfall. Whereas in agile, how it would work is you get the requirements. You try to understand the requirements at the same time. Parallelly, you start with the design. Once you, you are doing with the design, uh, on the same time, you want to start the build also. 
like like you do everything parallelly not wait for one phase to complete another phase to start you start doing parallelly simple terms it's like if you don't know to drive a car you are trying to build a car and also trying to learn how to drive the car okay okay so like that so so in the the in this way it will be very fast and then it can also bring in changes to the requirements agile methodology can say if there is any new requirement coming in or if there is a changes to the existing requirement itself you incorporate those changes in your design and also incorporate it in your build so it it is more dynamic uh, more robust in nature right so most customers or most ana plan projects they will implement agile methodology okay so everything happens parallelly uh, and then you eventually ask the customer to test it out and sometimes the testing also will happen at the time of building only okay usually it will be like sprint projects uh, ana plan projects like there might be three sprints four sprints meaning mm -hmm. one sprint will be four weeks okay okay uh, so in first sprint they would have some deadlines like within this one month you you should complete you should complete these 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 modules these dashboards okay and within that one month every day there will be like scrum meeting every team member within that project will join the call and they will give one status saying uh, what they are working on what was completed what they are currently working what are the open challenges to accomplish their current task only three okay. things they will discuss every day there will be stand up meeting okay so in that way it will be more effective like uh, like if you are a team manager or uh, if uh, uh, senior leadership uh, senior manager is joining that meeting he wants to listen to that entire uh, uh, team members what how, what what everyone is working on it will be more effective right scrum meeting so they will get a clear picture where, what are the hurdles where, where we are uh, lying and eventually are we able to achieve that task within that one month or not so it will be that fast so first month one sprint second month uh, sprint two third month sprint three and eventually end of uh, like uh, beginning uh, end of third month or fourth month it will be go like uh, testing go live okay in these three months only the customers will keep uh, changing the requirements design will change build will change and uh, uh, like everything will happen um, very quick so uh, so ana plan projects mostly it will be short projects and it will be very fast okay so okay. like that uh, <clears throat> so then you also use it for sales forecasting right so sales forecasting as in say if uh, if you if you are running a company you have like uh, five products that company manufactures okay and that products is sold across uh, multiple geographies okay? okay you based on the current year sales data you want to forecast the data for the next year and you also want to ensure uh, you have minimal expen expenses for that and eventually result in good profit okay okay so for selling anything you will have expenses right like uh, shipping cost sales rep incentives uh, distribution uh, like you'll have to pay to the distributors and you'll have to give good deals to the customers and things like that right so all of that will be considered to forecast your sales so then uh, the ana plan will be useful uh, for that why because you can set up versions within ana plan and eventually know like uh, based on the current year data how you can forecast the data for next year okay okay like that we have again configure price quote this is again module within sales uh, uh, like uh, there is a pricing a pricing of a product selling like what quota you need to assign what pricing you need to keep eventually so that uh, how sales reps will be paid like uh, we should ensure that we are not paying more to the sales reps also at the same time we should uh, we should not make sales reps feel that they are underpaid because if you are losing your sales rep then you are losing your revenue also right so sales will be direct sales indirect sales and all of that so we should ensure that uh, right pricing is kept and uh, uh, right payments are done okay and mo and that portion also will incorporate incentive compensation planning like how much incentives you need to pay as i said right how much commissions you need to give all of that you can do within ana plan right and also if you have a, a lot of territories sales territories how you manage that uh, within a territory there might be one uh, sales manager and underneath him there might be like 10 sales reps how you assign the quota for them 
uh, and uh, which location, like which territory to assign to them, so that right, uh, at least hundred percent sales has been hit. Uh, and there might be natural calamities and other stuff also, right? So everything will be considered, but eventually you will get to forecast and uh, you will know where you are at that at the end of that year. Okay, so in uh, I, I've listed all the business use cases here. Uh, whatever I I like, some these are some of the important things. But yeah, any customer or any organization using Anaplan, they use it for these uh, six business uh, cases, right? Uh, industries, you can say. Uh, I have worked mostly on sales part. Uh, so, but end of the day, if you know how to build a model. you can do you can build it in for any industry right so the functional knowledge you will not be aware but from technical perspective you would know right okay so maybe uh, after you finish the training and you have a good uh, knowledge when you give the interview you should be more focused from technical perspective right. forget about functional like you might not know much about budgeting forecasting strategic financial consolidation these things are like a finance guy and mba guy will know well okay so for you this might be uh, difficult so functional knowledge you will gain when you get on to a project uh, that, that is on the project learning when you try to understand the customers uh, current business processes you will you will understand that finance or uh, that uh, functional knowledge but what i'm saying you, the technicalities will remain the same building a model building a list modules importing data all of that will be same across any industry Okay. so you should focus from it side from technical side it side right right okay so these these use cases uh, for the like to implement or plan these businesses ana plan will be used mainly i have worked on sales forecasting territory quota management and some portions of commission calculation also right okay. uh, in my organization in my last uh, company uh, they they had one internal ana plan models also like for resource allocations for project management to understand like it was a very big team like 150 160 people were there across various locations uh, the senior managers uh, directors they wanted to know which uh, resources working on which project whether they are on bench or not how much they are how much they are getting utilized how many ongoing projects are there uh, which projects are in the pipeline uh, what is the total revenue and things like that those things they were managing within ana plan that was like an internal uh, uh, workspace they had to manage that right so so the client uh, workspaces will be there for customers uh, and also they would have built some uh, demo models kind of thing so they will show to the customer like saying these these things you can do in ana plan before any project comes okay they they do like an rfp kind of thing request for proposal before any project comes to the organization uh, the client will uh, want to understand like what all things you can do in ana plan like these is their current system these many problems they have they come with this problem statement so uh, customer right like uh, the organization who is having ana plan resources they would have built some demo models some uh, proposal models kind of thing they they show that to the customer having the problem saying these things you can do these dashboards you can build this is how ana plan would work like that they will project to the customer and eventually get that project okay, okay so they the like you i'm i'm giving you scenarios where and all ana plan can be used right so if you work for a client based organization service based organization then these things they will have like if you go into accenture tcs big companies they will have workspaces ana plan workspaces and they do this only okay okay even with ey deloitte these companies also do that so uh, like you have lot of opportunity whether it is product based or service based where you get in uh, it might be in any of this functional domain that you you will get in but you should not worry about that you should all focus on, see when you get into a project you will get to understand that functional knowledge also that will come that is a part of that job you will understand more things but technical side you should have that grip and eventually you will learn more things from technical side also okay okay this demand planning supply chain uh, this this was i have mentioned 